In the early 1930s in Germany, Adolf Hitler and his National Socialist Movement took control of the German government, growing the influence of fascism in Western Europe and setting the stage for political tension that would eventually erupt into one of the most destructive conflicts in world history. One of the many groups targeted by the sweeping wave of hatred in Germany were homosexuals. Despite this, for several years, one of Hitler's highest ranking lieutenants and the leader of his enforcers was a gay man. Ernst Ruhm, a homosexual Nazi, played a crucial role in cementing the power of a man who would eventually oversee the killing of 15,000 homosexuals, including Ruhm himself. Ruhm and Hitler had a conscious diplomatic arrangement of which both sides were aware for many years. Hitler knew of Ruhm's homosexuality, and it was an open secret in most of Germany. The leftist parties at that time, around 1930, tried to use the indictment of uh, Rome's homosexuality, they published it, in order to discredit the Nazi movement. But in fact, they did not succeed. You know, um, Hitler just kind of ignored it and said, I don't care what he does in private. He's a good soldier and he's a good Nazi. And for the rest, I don't care. Ruhm was aware of the protection afforded to him through his collaboration with Hitler. He was under the impression that as long as he supported Hitler, he would be able to live safely as a homosexual under Hitler's regime. Whereas Ernst Röhm uh, was consistently loyal to Adolf Hitler right up to the end, um, but could and did criticize Hitler to his face. Hitler maintained a close working relationship with Röhm, seeing him as a close ally on near equal footing. For Hitler, Röhm's military and tactical prowess proved too significant to lose. Hitler had little interest in homosexuality, as his priorities placed power and German supremacy above moral purity. Additionally, Ruhm's military position was of utmost importance for other homosexual men in Germany. By and large, they felt that if a homosexual could gain access to Hitler's inner circle, they would also be protected under his regime. Many homosexuals joined Ruhm's organization, the Sturmabteilung, or SA, specifically to work under a homosexual man. Hitler and Ruhm had many internal conflicts and debates, but rarely was Ruhm's sexuality the focus of these disagreements. The two men clashed over the tenets of a strong government, with Ruhm believing that military superiority was needed to exert power, and Hitler viewing the military as subservient to his political movement. Another key debate focused on the policies the Nazis would enact once in power. And also a problem for Hitler was that the SA was a kind of, there were a lot of people in the SA which took the socialist part of national socialism seriously. The ideological differences between Hitler and Ruhm eventually became irreconcilable. When Hitler gained power, his priorities shifted. Ruhm, possessing a strong military force and a vision for Germany that was often at odds with Hitler's, became less of an asset and more of a liability. You have to make a difference between the Nazi movement before 1933 and after 1933, before they were in power and they considered themselves to be a kind of revolutionary force, an oppositional force, and after 1933, when they themselves became the establishment. Hitler grew paranoid of a revolution, led by Ruhm and the SA. Even worse, Heinrich Himmler, leader of Hitler's police force, carried a deep hatred of homosexuals. Hitler and Himmler 
came to the agreement that Room had to be eliminated. Room and his associates were staying in the Hanselbauer Hotel in Bad Weisse, Germany. Room was participating in a party of explicit intentions with fellow homosexuals in the SA. The SA men were arrested and eventually executed, including Room. He was taken to a cell and given a gun with which to kill himself. Room refused, declaring, If I am to be killed, let Adolf do it himself. The next day, on July 1st, 1934, Ernst Room was shot and killed. While Nazi leaders presented Room's death and the SA purge as an attempt to curb homosexual activity in their ranks, historians doubt that this is truly the case. The main reason to finish off Rome was not his homosexuality. That was only a pretext. They could use, it was a power uh, struggle within the Nazi movement. It was also a political power struggle between different wings of the Nazi movement. Yeah, there were, there was an important wing in the Nazi movement, which I would say was more rightist, was much more uh, drawing support for, uh, of the, the establishment in Germany. And there was within the Nazi movement also a potentially revolutionary, even perhaps socialist wing. Yeah. And when Hitler was in power and he received support of all the big industrialists and financial interests and he wanted the support of the middle classes then he also wanted to get rid of this so yeah more or less socialist part of his movement who had performed its function in the struggle for power these paramilitary groups, and now the leadership of these paramilitary groups had to be finished. After his assassination, more power came in the form of a racing room than protecting him, as demonstrated in these cigarette cards, where the Nazi government edited out Room's face to prevent his positive image from resurfacing and undermining Nazi propaganda around Room's homosexuality. Many have seen Room as a figure not worthy of historical examination, as he aided in the rise of one of the most horrid despots in world history. While Room's actions were heinous and unforgivable, the lack of care given to his story has allowed Nazi propaganda to claim his narrative, and with it, the story of homosexuals in the early days of Hitler's regime. Even though Room was likely not killed for homosexual acts, his death led to greater persecution for many other homosexuals. The diplomatic immunity for homosexual men in Germany, which was created by Hitler and Room's arrangement, ended with Room's life. Then he was assassinated, and overnight uh, this was a turning point in the perception of gay men um, in terms of the Nazi movement. Without the protection afforded to them through Hitler and Room's arrangement, homosexuals became much more vulnerable. Arrests of homosexual men rose from six to 700 throughout the 1920s and early 1930s to over 30,000 a year in the years leading up to World War II. Ernst Room encapsulated the transition between National Socialist values before and after Hitler took power. Room's tenuous diplomatic relationship with other Nazi leaders before Hitler's rise allowed him to maintain his influence despite his homosexuality. His assassination marked a new era for homosexuals in Germany that led to the deaths of approximately 15,000 people. Room's demise and the ensuing propaganda impact rhetoric around homosexuality to this day.